I think I would actually go back to the initial policies of the EU, going back to the 1960s, when the EU started to have bilateral relations with countries of the Middle East and North Africa. And then it came up with the global Mediterranean policy, which was also called the renovated Mediterranean policy. And what we see is that the EU has come up with a series of bilateral and multilateral as well as regional initiatives like the Euro-Mediterranean Partnership and now the European Neighbourhood Policy as well as the Union for the Mediterranean. So we're not missing in terms of instruments, in terms of policies. But what the point I was trying to make is that we're lacking on substance and on implementation. What we need is really some very practical examples of how the EU is going to be made accountable to the people in the region and not just about making the government or the leadership in, in the um, Middle East and North Africa accountable to us. I think it's actually very patronising to set criteria and say this is what we want to do you know, in this region and this is what we expect because the people there have very vocally told us that they have an opinion about what they want, they have an opinion about their needs and their basic needs are basically food, employment, housing, social services and this is the sort of areas where the EU has to have a direct impact otherwise it's not going to be taken seriously and otherwise its, cre its credibility will still fail in the region. The EU is very good at concepts, we have the concept of deep democracy, we have the concept of mutual accountability but what do we mean in practice? I mean we have hardly defined the concept of democracy and suddenly we're being told that we're overwhelmed by events in the Middle East and North Africa. But the writing has been on the wall since 2008 at least when we had the bread riots in Egypt for instance where people made it very clear that what they need are stable basic needs and then we can move on to discuss political reforms and the political spectrum of, of things. But I think if we fail economically in this region we're not going to make it politically because people's needs come first. I think, I think the point that we need to make is that again the EU has to be serious as to whether it's going to balance out its interests or its values. I think Syria is a very very important key player in the region and we know this very well and so is Libya. So in the past if, if we can start talking about about you know, what individual member states do, for instance, in terms of arms export. We know that some of these arms have been used to repress people in these revolts. So what are we going to do in terms of pushing and pressing member states to take very important action on reflecting, you know, are we interested in economically developing our relationship with these countries? Are we really interested in values, in human rights, in, in the principles that we uphold as a European you know, um, as a European region, are we going to um, make ourselves fools in front of the people by saying, you know, we promote one thing but we do something else at the back of, of you know, these negotiations. So I think, um, you know, it's very sad to see that a, a civil war has developed in Libya. But again, we need to be serious, you know, are we going to really protect the people there? And the same thing with Syria. And I think Turkey is a very defining partner in this, in this issue. Turkey has shown that it's very very much prepared to help and support the European Union and I think because of the issue of Turkey's accession to the European Union the European Union institutions are very very careful in giving Turkey the important role that it can really play in terms of stability and securing a good relationship with the people and the citizens of Syria and of Libya so I think more has to be done by working with partners who can really make a difference